welcome to our weekly patch notes discussions. A bit later than normal, I know, but just because uh, Echo couldn't be here and I was home very late, so hence a starting bit later. I asked Carnot to join us, actually to join me, so at least we still have uh, a discussion instead of me just reading out what's there. So let's switch over to uh, Discord. Hey Carl, how you doing? Uh, well in yourself. Not bad, not bad. Thanks for being Good here. Good. So at least we still have a discussion and not me just uh, reading out loud. What are you talking notes. about? I can have perfectly fine discussions with myself. You know, it's even arguments, which you know, it's it's really good stuff. I know. It's I mean. Good. I talk to myself quite regularly as well. I mean, everyone needs the expert opinion every so often, so... Yeah. Exactly. You know, I, c I can't disagree with that sound logic right there. So, uh, no, no, sounds good. But yeah, I'm here to contribute my opinion, as I always do. So, oh. that's probably cra cracking. Right, so, we're at the week 119 update, the Brambles. Grow, harvest and deploy the new Bramble defenses. Those brambles can now be grown and harvested like other crops before being deployed around your base as a defense system. So welcome to week 119 with the spiky introduction of the brambles. These homegrown deployable defenses provide an environmentally friendly way to defend your base, going green. Being able to be grown from seeds and harvested before being deployed around your base. We've also got news on our ne next big update and paid content pack, Laika, and also the Creature Comforts DLC. Also included are some more balance fixes for the networks and batteries, and info on next week's update. Now before we go in and have a read, mm -hmm. uh, when I read this, the Creature Comforts DLC, Mm -hmm. Then I was thinking, is this going to be where those new food and water troughs and those new saddles are going to be? And the beds, yes, I think so, pretty much, yeah, pretty much, because this is creature comfort, so I'm assuming it's taking, you know, all those rare materials from the bosses and making some cool stuffs out of it, which is... Yeah, not necessarily yeah. Uh, boss materials. Uh, no, no, you've, course, you've seen, like, the loose leather saddles and the bear hide saddles. And, yeah stuff like that <clears throat> could be something like that but we'll, we'll probably have to see but i was unfortunately reading that sentence slightly differently because i was like hoping that the end would be a comma so it's like the next big update a paid content pack but, and then Laker being some something i'm assuming uh, and then a creature dlc but it seems like the big update is a paid content pack so, yeah i i how I read this, Laika is going to be like uh, New Frontiers and like Sticks, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. basically uh, map expansion and stuff, where the Creature Comforts DLC is more like the uh, the DLC for the decoration, the decoration pack, uh, for example, and uh, yeah, industrial just... uh, furniture pack, those things. Like and nice uh, to have and some extra yeah, for in your base, but... DLCs. Not really gameplay, uh, more gameplay, not really going to affect the gameplay as such. Yeah, the only thing is, is that um, I read the terminology here, the, the terms content pack and DLCs, and it immediately brings up, uh, you know, when games sell, you know, their premium editions with future, all future included expansions, let's say for example, but it's like, oh, no, this is a content pack. It doesn't have been, it's not included. Oh, no, this is a DLC. It's not included. So when people start throwing around terminologies like this, not saying that the Icarus devs are or that it isn't, I'm just saying that I really don't like it when there's, you know, like, <laughs> buy a game with uh, all the future planned expansions included, well, and then they just have to change the word of what they bring out. Kind the of supporters thing. edition was including... I believe the first three expansions. Yeah, expansions. Now, sticks should not be counted as one of those, I think, but I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. uh, New Frontiers was definitely included in the uh, supporters edition. Yeah. Like, um, I think but it wasn't, still it, but it wasn't, gonna be but it included, wasn't, but. 
but it didn't say forever. It just said the next three. There was exactly. a limit. Oh, okay, there was. Yep. Okay, now yep. this yep. is the question. That's not a statement. <laughs> now, did, I, know, I sound very sure of myself, but no. That's from my side, it is a statement. It was like okay. the base that's game true. and the first, the I believe uh, it said the first three, like, expansions. Like, like expansions being the term, Sticks, for example, yeah. Sticks is basically an expansion. Yeah. As is New Frontiers, the Prometheus map. Yes. As will be Laika. Yeah. Which uh, is true. I mean, again, it's a lot of new development that they have to put in. I'm not saying yeah. anything. I just, like I said, I don't like it when there's these... Because then it's like, oh no, it's a content pack. It's not an expansion. So then there's still one open uh, expansion, or it's not going to fall into it. It's like, I'm just... Let's just see what they're going to say about it. They might... I don't, I don't know if they think would, they would even mention it again, but... Yeah, that's fine. Because you can't buy that pack, I presume, anymore. I'm not sure how real realistic. Uh, yeah, the supporters check. edition, no. Yeah, no, I don't think so. <laughs> no, it was like long, 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 long yeah, time exactly. ago. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, but actually, but yeah, I'm thinking I mean, about something, other, yeah. a, a, another bad thing whilst reading this, which was, obviously, it's like, like crops where you build it around your base. And then I just envision, obviously, your goal is to have this massive, beautiful, large field of brambles surrounding your base. Yep. Right? What happens when lightning hits it? Good question. Maybe keep a bit of open space between the brambles and the uh, fortification walls. Yeah, like a like a fire line. But anyway, yep. let's probably carry on unless you had something else to. to uh, no, 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 not really. Okay. So let us jump in and have a read on the patch notes. A couple of notable improvements. Improved performance of the tier three spawn blocker. Uh, creature deterrent by significantly reducing the number of times it will update the spawn blocker area. It now only updates when adding fuel or running out of fuel. Tier 3 one is the one uh, running on biofuel. Mm. So instead of like constantly updating the, uh, the, the, the spawn blocked area, uh, thus uh, using up ticks, thus costing uh, CPU time. It now only mm -hmm. updates when it runs out of fuel mm. or when you add fuel. And I will assume sense. also when tick. you turn it off and on. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's just a tick for you know enabling a field where spawn blocking is enabled or disabled. And you know, when it runs out, it disables the flag. So it makes sense. Yeah. Uh, next one, updated the modifier effectiveness display scaling around 100% instead of positive or negative effect. This now better shows that less effective modifiers only have an X% percent effect. For example, 20% effectiveness modifier shows as 20% instead of minus 80. A 150% modifier shows as 150 instead of plus 50. This is something I've indeed uh, talked about before on, uh, for example, the crop plots, right? The growth yeah. modifier, uh, mm. plant fatigue. So plants mm. uh, don't grow that well anymore. Uh, and the growth rate uh, or the modifiers, they were always that wonky, like how do I have to interpret these? It says mm -hmm. minus 80. Right? Uh, what does yeah. this mean exactly? Now it's going to show oh, it's only growing at 20% of the normal growth right. rate yeah. due to yeah. plant fatigue and stuff. So I like yeah. this one. I like this one uh, quite a lot. I mean, yeah, I mean, they could have also, well, I don't know if it would have been an option, but they could have just also just shown an, uh, an explicit value of growth metrics. For example, you could obviously have our speed metric, which is I move at 230. It's like, oh, that doesn't actually have any meters a second or inches a second or feet a second or whatever you, you people like to measure with uh, whatever a second as a movement. It's just a value. The bigger it is, the better it is. So realistically, if they still gave you, I think they mentioned there is the, there was a measurement they added in the previous patch, wasn't it? That shows you like, uh, the number growth of, like, rate. Growth actually, speed. well, yeah. not not. Uh, yeah, it is a total number growth. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, so, yeah. So. To yeah. Like total modifier uh, effectiveness yeah. uh, stuff. So, 
So yeah. yet again, maybe that question array arose because maybe this change has been coupled to that because people are like, well, how how does this work even more now? Because now I'm even more consu- uh, conf- confused versus it's a number, the bigger it is, the better it is. So just try and make all the numbers big. But anyway, it's, it's well, okay. at it, least it doesn't it's, bother me. It's giving you the, like the end number, which yeah. so less open for interpretation. Yeah. So yeah. a clearer number, which I like. Uh, well, I mean, it's still like bows did some strange things, and sometimes the numbers don't really add up. But like I said, that's I said with armor, you know, there's a whole bunch of factors. So, and this is like a base modifier at the beginning. If it then adds on top of it, it's <laughs> a 120 plus bonus to a 20% bonus. It's not an additive; it's a percentage of a percentage. It's a percentage so it's, of the of the modified yeah. value or a percentage of the base value, and do you have to yeah. add the yeah. percentage so modifiers yeah. and yeah. Add those to the base, or like indeed, we we were yeah. looking at that when we were testing out the uh, food spoil uh, buff, yeah. uh, food buff spoil uh, yeah. expiry the, like the duration uh, like, thing. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, because it's some 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 of them stack, and some of them would only be based upon the base get calculated first, and then later on. So yeah, it, it just it, with especially as the game would progress with more complexity, I think they might have to probably just re-evaluate this once again and decide okay well look you know there's a base speed certain things will buff the base others will buff, you know be an applicative or a multiplicative or an additive percentage bonus on it but like i said it's maybe something that they would revisit once again but we'll see how this looks if it makes sense it makes sense we'll, right. we'll see yeah. right next one updated many user interface elements to prevent a small box next to the device inventory when modifiers are not present. Uh, like if there's no uh, modifier present, it still shows like an empty box or something. Could not be, yeah. sure. Not sure what they mean here. But, uh. Uh, yeah, that's probably it. Exactly as you interpreted, I think. Yeah. yeah. I, I think that like reading it. Yeah. That makes the most yeah. sense to me. No, that does, yeah. That's that sounds yeah, about right. The Nomex quest, Nomad quest has, uh, has been fixed. Uh, it had an issue where the site, if you uh, complete the site objective, the quest didn't progress. Now they fixed it. Yes. Which is good. I've indeed uh, in Discord seen uh, multiple people complain about, uh, amongst others, this mission. Like were quite a few missions uh, with powered devices which basically kind of broke after the batteries uh, uh, update yeah I and mean, they were working on getting all those missions back in working order again yeah it's probably not a great idea to leave large missions right before large like mechanical true, um, overhaul true. game systems so. But not everyone uh, is aware of the, let's say, the risks. Oh, it's easy. They just have to, you know, follow the channel. And uh, yeah. but, I mean, product. we, we always find. try to yeah. like finish our mission before the Friday. Yeah. Back in the days, we yeah. were uh, gaming yeah. multiple times a week. Like, okay, yeah. let's finish this mission on Thursday. So yeah. when Friday the update hits, we know for sure it's not going to break our mission. That's correct. But not everyone works that way. Yeah. Anyway, let's see. Nice image. There's a lot of brambles around here. And quite high as well. Yeah, that looks. I, I'm guessing the angle might be. Uh, if you might be standing at a little bit of a. Oh, wait. I, I don't think it's level ground. I think now, it's for a, for a moment, I thought there were brambles growing like over the building, but those are crop pots no, no, no. on top of the building. Growing brambles. Oh, uh, yeah, that's correct. So yeah. basically, you harvest brambles, you get the seeds, you plant them in yeah. a crop plot. When they're fully grown, you harvest them from the crop plot, and those you can plant. Yeah, I you can plant on in, in in the ground. So you make a mound with your shovel, and you put that bramble bush in there. If so, I'm not mistaken. I also think because this is a good question. Uh, I had a because he's sitting there with a gun pointing it at the brambles. I don't think the brambles will allow bullets to pass through it. So I think it'll be if you shoot straight into the bramble and there's like a wolf behind the bramble. Usually, if you have like the brush gun or any normal gun, it would usually also you know travel through 
relatively thinish bush. Uh, um, you know, brambles being, I would say, well, I mean, it doesn't look the thickest thing. If you hit the little twig, it's going to deviate the bullet, but it should still allow it through. Looking especially uh, sticks in Olympus, where you have like a lot of uh, undergrowth, uh, you are able to shoot animals through bushes. So yeah, I think you will also be able to shoot uh, animals through brambles. But I know that we we, that we have the brambles in um, in Prometheus, right? And yeah, the uh, swamp area. Yeah, in the swamp area. And I don't think you could shoot through those. At Actually, you can. Difference. Oh, you can? Okay, you I'm, can. I it. I've been doing that before. Oh, okay, cool. Well, in that case, that's probably the same logic. So, yeah. yeah. So, the big item this week, the brambles. This week we are adding a new deployable defense to the game, the, being the brambles. Now, unlike hedgehogs, these brambles are not crafted, but they are grown before being harvested and deployed. Bramble seeds can be bought from the orbital workstation in packs of five or twenty. Sorry, in packs of five for twenty ren after unlock for fifty ren, and grown on the surface. I thought you could also get them from harvesting them in the wild, uh, but yeah, I probably. haven't played this update yet, so I cannot confirm this. I hope you will be able, otherwise you will be forced to uh, buy at least one seed pack. Then again, 20 Ren ain't that much. Yeah. And it's in-game currency and no real-life currency, so still, meh. Yeah. Now, each seed, when grown and nurtured, will grant a few deployable defenses, multiple, and also a chance to return seeds, just like any other crop. However, they do have a higher fatigue modifier, and they do require more regular reseeding than other more sturdy crops. Now, we have seen the exotic plants. You mm -hmm. can grow them like three times and then they like exhaust it and then you have to take them out and uh, replant them. Uh, other plants you can basically grow infinite, although they will slow down to a crawl the growth speed. Uh, I reckon brambles will be somewhere in between, but still a limited amount like uh, grow a couple of times and then uh, they're exhausted and you'll have to uh, reseed them. I wonder if you could just plant the crop plots around your base and then just have the growing bramble effectively acting as a deployed uh, bramble. I don't know. I don't know if this the same uh, if the is going to do the same uh, slow and damage to. Uh, I think it would. Animals and players. I think it would because that would be like oh you're crafting and collecting it. It's like uh, the bramble bush in Minecraft pretty much. So, yeah, I don't know. We'll have to uh, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, I think I'm first gonna in the subsequent gameplay first gonna uh, log in with my farmer character, so at least I can uh, plant the brambles so that they do not wither. Yeah. And then sure. just run uh, through the crop plot a couple of times once it's fully grown, and then we can see <laughs> whether or not the plants in the plots also do the damage and the slow we will see it, we is will kind of, it is a kind of weed so it should grow pretty quickly but we'll see yeah. uh, bramble seeds can also oh yeah can also be gathered uh, gathered from native brambles on prometheus which previously would give fiber seeds when harvested now they no longer give the fiber seeds but the bramble seeds okay good so you don't have to buy them from the workshop, you can just run to the swamp, uh, harvest a couple of brambles and uh, get if the seeds from there. If you are on Prometheus. If you are Prometheus, true. It says it native doesn't... brambles on Prometheus. Yes, but it doesn't take red exotics to unlock. Nope, so you can most likely plant them on uh, sticks and Olympus as well. Exactly. Uh, I'll check in the subsequent gameplay to see whether or not it has this Prometheus exclusive icon thingy uh, in the corner. Top corner of the icon. Uh, right. Let's see, when placed as a defense, 
brambles cannot be moved after that point but they are very lightweight so they won't provide much burden when stacked we have also taken this time to provide a balance overpass of other deployable defenses halved the self damage taken by hedgehogs so if you run into a hedgehog you take damage and the hedgehog takes damage uh, the damage to the hedgehog itself is now halved however doubling the self damage taken by fortification spikes this effectively is deteriorating when impaling enemies um, this is is gonna this might gonna be an issue if you do uh, high level enzyme geysers mm -hmm. uh, on my sticks open world I have an enzyme geyser with uh, wooden fortifications around it level 100 plus bears are coming at me at the third wave mm -hmm. uh, and I'm basically running around repairing the spikes all the time don't have time for anything else now they will actually destroy them because the damage is doubled Pretty much, uh, which makes sense, which is why you would want to use the brambles to slow them down. Or, yeah, but are you going to yeah. place brambles uh, for a temporary defense? Only for a uh, fixed defense, like long time defense. Yeah, I mean, I mean well, like I said, the, 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 the seed cost isn't that much, but yeah, like I uh, said. But it's uh, also uh, the growth. And if, yeah. you, if you don't have the talent, you grow a bramble, you don't harvest in time, it is going to wither. Uh, I did an enzyme geyser on uh, Prometheus, lower level bears, and they broke already uh, the spikes. So that's going to be very tough. Also, and this is info uh, I did not uh, verify myself. I got it from Discord. There is this one mission, Manhunt, where you have to defend a base and you're relying on uh, fortifications. And it is quite a long fortified wall you have to defend. Good luck doing that mission solo. Yeah, I mean, we'll have to see. We'll probably take a look because they could have just as well halved the HP of the item rather than having to play around with the damage modifiers so uh, the effect we'll would be the, the same but we'll have to see. Yeah. yeah but basically they break twice as fast now so that mission is going to be tough when you play single when you play solo but we'll see uh, we haven't done that mission yet it might be the one which we're actually doing on uh, the Thursday character. I'd have to check, but that mission is going to be harder. Yeah. Now, with this change, we have also adjusted some of the details of the mission dispatch. Uh, not sure uh, the, uh, about what this mission exactly entails. Uh, let's see, can I quickly check the machine details? It says, well, this thing has a challenging hard mode, which we've adjusted by reducing the spawn count. So this might be the mission that you're referring to? Well, yeah, it is indeed the dispatch manhunt, yeah. Manhunt is the dispatch manhunt. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. so they've so reduced the spawn count. Reduce the spawn count of the foes. So it should now have a similar level of challenge, but with increased performance. Okay. Well, at least they <laughs> took the comments I saw about that mission in mind and uh, halved the uh, enemy spawn. Good. I'm glad about that. Still, like, uh, horde mode is going to be harder now. But then again, Let's just see it as a bit of an extra challenge, shall we? Yeah, I mean, there might be different building structures that you could use. I still wonder if you built like ramps 
so that bears fall it will bear, bear, bears do go up ramps so if you build ramps and then build like a, a pile of like a pit of spikes or something around the base but that's a lot of construction so yeah, yeah it's gonna be a whole lot of construction yeah yeah because you could and, probably build like fire pits at the bottom of it and then they'll just land on yeah top and of then it, make so make uh, stone or better yet concrete walls yeah, uh, around your a... moat like you build a uh, build wall and then uh, so wall uh, fire pits wall ramp so you basically create a moat yeah basically and that they run up the mo uh, ramp fall into the thing because that's what they do because they're looking at you which is standing across from them and then hopefully they don't make the distance but like I said I've never really try to do such a mission on my own to think of a strategy but yeah uh, you're gonna need a ton of resources yeah so doable for an operation not doable for a mission mm. uh, oh, I think up until now it was mission. up until now it was like uh, you could just uh, especially with an operation just build a whole bunch of uh, walls and spikes and put like two or three rows if you want to. Yeah, we can see. Oh. We could probably try the mission at some point once I'm able to game again. But oh yeah, it we seems will. Like we will take into consideration. So yeah. it's a good thing. We will. No worries. Um, we are also working on more automated deployable defenses, i.e. turrets, in the future. And this will mean more balancing of the existing ones of the existing defenses mm -hmm. but yeah uh, especially for horde uh, for the geezers horde mode turrets oh that's gonna be nice just make sure you have a ton of ammo with you pretty much and the image here you actually see the previous image but now from different uh, different angle and yes, indeed, crop plots on top of the of the building, and a ring of brambles around it. And I think I was right; it was on a down slope, so yeah. they are not that tall. Uh, you can about jump over it. If it's a single row, if it's a double row, you will still uh, get slowed down by them. Mm. I've been doing a fair amount of traveling through the swamp, so yeah, I kind of know. Okay, this week, batteries and networks continued. We've got more fixes and balance improvements to the resource networks and batteries update from two weeks ago, as we continue to get feedback from the community. Uh, the missions Abyss, Akatsar and others requiring powered deployables have now been fixed to work with the update. Uh, you needed to deploy, for example, a laser, uh, which was supposed to have an internal power supply, and all of a sudden it said, yeah, but you need power. Now you connected power and it still didn't work after the batteries and network update. So yeah, they've been working on fixing those kinds of things. Yeah, sounds good. In Alcatraz, we have fixed the biofuel composter not registering on the network when not processing. Uh, and it's uh, one of the things was you need to place a biofuel composter, and then people place it down, and it never got ticked off in the in the mission list, mm -hmm. unless you put something in it to actually uh, being uh, active. Yeah, like the uh, mm -hmm. composter is like uh, stuff to make biofuel, so you yeah. needed to make biofuel, and then it ticked it off in the mission list. That has been fixed Which? now. Now you well, I mean, you place it down and it is immediately ticked off. Yeah, it depends. If the mission says you know, craft some biofuel or craft a. No, it said know, uh, it said something or... like uh, place a biofuel composter. Oh, okay, just placing it. So, so no. do take it off when you do what it says. Makes sense. And they also fix some other missions required powered processors. Again, uh, now you place them. And they will be ticked off instead of having to actually run them to tick off. 
Now in an Abyss mission we fix a research station quest step and the uh, filling the generator step. Been a while. Uh, Abyss, Abyss, that's the one uh, where you had to like run around with the ore in your inventory slowly being poisoned and stuff. Uh, remember that okay. one? I remember that one, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's okay. Yeah. But uh, anyway, they they fixed those. Fixes of missions are good, yeah. Yeah. Uh, wind turbine audio was looping incorrectly. They fixed that. Uh, not sure which audio was looping where incorrectly, but okay, they fixed it, so that's good. Uh, fixed certain inspector devices, such as the water pump. Not showing the modifiers and networks UI, resulting in an empty screen. Uh, okay, it's bug fixes, which makes yep. sense. Which I more important to me, fix clients only seeing the electrical network when opening the resource network inspector via the flow meter. Now, when you run on a DS, everyone is a client. Yeah. If you run in peer-to-peer, uh, -peer, yeah, you, can have, you have one host and the rest is client. Mm -hmm. So I've been, I've put uh, uh, this in as a bug, like the first time I uh, played after the batteries network uh, update. Like, hey, I open the flow meter and I cannot see the water network. I even place down two flow meters, one only collected, uh, connected to electric network, the other only connected to water network. I still could not see the water network overview. Uh, okay. It was just annoying because I could still uh, access that information uh, by uh, picking up a water tool, eh, put it in my uh, on hand, so on, on the hotbar and like activate okay. and okay, then yeah. click on, uh, for example, rain collector. The one which I had hooked up to the water network, and then yep. from there I could still. So it, yeah. you were still able to access it, but Not you couldn't do it from so the yeah. flow meter, and you had to have uh, the water tool. tool. Uh, so I'm glad I fixed this, and I will definitely be looking, uh, <laughs> definitely be checking whether or not this is uh, properly fixed. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, improved the spline connection logic, basically the connection pucks on the water and power lines, mm -hmm. to provide smoother connections to other splines. This prevents cases where splines would wrap around existing pucks to enter from certain angles to new pucks or spline nodes. Both water and power network piping. Yeah, many a time you like uh, put down a spline. And then you continue and then you hook up a new uh, power line to an existing spline and it's like uh, where the one is like line horizontal, the next one is like putting vertical on top of it or through it actually. So it was looking quite weird. Oh, okay. This should now be fixed. Well, I probably you probably have to redeploy the, the cable. Uh, it's not just going to automatically true. fix, but yeah. Uh... Most likely, you can probably go check, but I'm pretty certain that, that you would need to probably disconnect uh, and connect it. I believe in last week's patch notes it was mentioned uh, that they improved the logic. Uh, now preventing the bug where if you uh, uh, like take out a piece of wire, like the entire power line, all the uh, all the connection pucks or all the splines disappeared which was very 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 annoying wow because you couldn't you suck. couldn't connect anything to it no more you like only on one end there was still the spline so you had to go all the way to the single spline on the long uh, wire and then you had to remove uh, all the different parts uh, it was very annoying so I believe it was in last week's patch note where they said they fixed that. Uh, it was an, it's an intermittent problem. I've never uh, been able to reliably uh, reproduce it. Okay. So every time when I like uh, removed a piece of wire, I was always like, I hope it's not gonna break. So that should no longer be the problem. 
But yeah, like oh. I said, because it's an intermittent problem, uh, it's a tad hard to test. Oh, well, it's yeah, true. But yeah, more improvements, which is yeah. good. So, balances. Wind turbine damage has been modified to provide a smoother degradation through storms. Now, How much damage did it take in the end? Keep in mind, they are not taking storm damage. But they're taking damage when being overcharged. Cool. During a storm, it's going to spin faster, so it's overcharging, it's going to take damage. The power output is going to decrease, so at some point, even when you have like the high severity storm, uh, it will only be uh, providing power at 100% of nominal, so it will stop taking damage. I believe it was around 50% or so. Meaning that the most damage your wind turbines could take was around 50%. And after that they were basically immune from any further overcharge damage. Mm -hmm. So basically you take the number of wind turbines you would normally need, double that and then you sh you sh you're fine. You should well, never have to worry about repairing the stuff. If you're lazy and you don't want to repair the stuff, but yeah, it's... So. However, they, they are going to change the uh, the numbers a bit, so if you keep not repairing them, at some point, uh, the power output of the wind turbines will be zero. They will That's not good. be completely destroyed. So you don't, sense, you don't have to rebuild them, but you will have to repair them because the power output at some point is going to be zero. Because it's a broken thing. It does Broken things aren't supposed to work. So exactly. yeah, that's just the way it is. So it's, so, not, a, it's not a yeah. nuclear generator that you just, you know, tuck something in. So you should be spending a little bit of time yeah. because it's generating you way more energy than for considering the fact that, yeah, you could have to freaking biofuel, freaking harvest and decompose and or you can just occasionally take a repair tool and go hit it a few times that's yeah boohoo but anyway so that's why i i on my uh prometheus open world i'm trying to uh let's say work around this issue a bit so initially i uh, created a base uh, like half the map away in a different biome uh, put uh, wind turbines in there and a very long power line to my main base. Mm -hmm. That's not going to work. Is it? It is. It's too oh, far. It's too to far. It. No, it's not going to work. It's too far away. So I checked. I put the freezer down there as well. Ice was still being generated. So mm -hmm. in the background, it was kind of still working. However, it did not provide power to my main base. Checking the mm. network, the electricity network, it did not show any of the, pro, the consumers or the suppliers in the did far you try, away base. Did you try building, um, like, uh, like you probably would do it around 100 or 200 blocks or units or measurements, or like away from the farm, you would put down a... Um, like uh, what's one of these tools? A flow, for, me a flow meter. Yeah, a flow meter or something yeah. like that. And then you would do it yeah, there's there's uh, a rather simple check to uh, put a flow meter and hook it up to the power network and see when it's gonna show nothing no more, and exactly. make sure the power lines are still properly connected. And it was in the same biome, right? It's not like uh, you went into a I, desert or to a. I went or... into a different biome. The yeah. whole idea being, if I'm in main base, yeah. I have weather events yeah. in the biome I am in. A biome yeah. where I'm not in, there is no weather event. Well, technically there is, because you and I have switched between biomes, and then there's an arctic storm just like right in front of your face when you take three steps. Yes, technically. And then you turn around, and then you freeze it, and then, and then yeah. Technically there is. Now, one of the things I'm going to test with this, or what I want to test with this, is is there a difference between technically and in reality? I thought you said it was just an outside of a rendering range, like you had no, with no, the no. tools. No, no, no. It's like, like, uh, like half, uh, half the map away in a different biome. Yeah, yeah, but if you think about the fact, like, what we had when we had the drills, it's like, yeah, no animals would attack it. 
because it was outside of like yeah. 100 or 500 they, blocks yeah. from us. They, they, they are still, uh, the drills are yeah. still working, but no animals are spawning there. So, oh, so specifically but, because the, the animals aren't spawning there, but exactly. if there was a storm, it would still take damage. Uh, if those drills would take damage, yes. Luckily, they don't. A weather event is biome wide. Where uh, yeah, spawning of animals is only uh, in around, a circle yeah. area around the players. Remember where mm -hmm. we were ahead of the animal spawn multiple times when doing a speedrun? Yeah, I know, I know, I know. But I'm just thinking as if, if you had like a... Like if you had a base, um, and that base had like a whole bunch of logs floating on top of it, and there was a fuse burning somehow, and then it would literally take to the point where you were on the opposite side of the map that I am pretty certain that the computer and the game isn't going to be rendering and that those logs are falling on your building and destroying it. Uh, Up until the point. Because it's like, if, if the fuse, it's almost as if the fuse would run or freeze or time out or it wouldn't be calculated anymore after a certain distance. So well, it would just be like, okay, well, it's suspended in its previous known state because that is loaded out of memory. And therefore, it's sort of ignored, which is probably also why you don't get electricity. Well, because the fact that, chunk that the, has left your memory. the freezer was still generating ice. I gave it quite some time. Uh, so I put it down and there and, and, and I did uh, a bit of work. So I spent some time close to the base. I was like putting up uh, more wind turbines and stuff. And then I checked the freezer. It had 53 ice. Then I went away. Back to base, did a bit of uh, running around there, went to the uh, volcanic area to empty out the tree, came back, did some yeah. more stuff in base, then went back to the power base. Uh -huh. Lo and behold, 108 ice. That's not that much ice. Is that as if it was running constantly to generate ice? Time-wise, I'd say yes. Oh, okay. But yeah. Uh, now I'm, I'm going to try something else. Uh, my uh, So, I have a couple of uh, creature returns in my base. And I notice if I'm a certain distance away from base, they are not showing active on the map no more. They will still kind of work, as in there will still be no animal spawning within the range of, but that can also be because eh, it's too far away from the player. Um, but yes. Now on the other, the, the the base is quite close to the to the mountains. On the other side of the mountains is swamp biome. There is a corner of the swamp biome where the creature deterrents are actually showing active on the map. So, what I was trying to do is build over in the mountain and put a power line straight over the mountain to that corner yeah. of the swamp biome. Oh, oh, and I then yeah, I yeah. fell off the ladder through uh, a couple of touch floors I've built uh, to get up there. Fell into the mountain, long time, long way down, broke my leg, okay, fine, no problem. However, uh, you should actually check my stream of uh, yesterday. The attempt, yeah. I was never going to be able to build my way out of it anymore. Oh, okay. So I basically just restored the last backup, so I lost 20 minutes of gameplay. Mark, oh, well. uh, note, I didn't lose 20 minutes of stream, no. <laughs> I mm -hmm. just had to, like, turn the clock back 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. But you'll see, so, I mean, there might be some workarounds, and even if it's that, it's... Still to the point where one of the next lines you'll read already why there uh, might be changes still inbound. So, oh, there will be changes inbound. Like I said, they will make it at some point. It will be getting to yeah. where uh, wind turbines will generate zero power after uh, multiple yeah. storms. Anyway, let's continue. More balances for the batteries network. We've been monitoring feedback, and we do acknowledge that some do not like the added maintenance, but most do enjoy the extra weather effects. Yes, I'm trying to work around it, but I still like it. We're still keen to hear and see feedback, as always, obviously. 
Yeah, so that's the point. So yeah. that's the fact that, you yeah. know, my opinion is wind turbines are overpowered, so therefore yeah. they become maintenance. Yeah. You could introduce something new, like, uh, like you said, higher tiered turbines, which would just lock themselves during the event yeah. of the storm. So I don't disagree. I'm, I mean, zero power. I'm not saying so. they should not have introduced this feature. Now, I like this feature, mm. actually. Mm. Does not mean I'm not going to try to work around it. Not true. I mean, just, fine. just for a fun, you know. Yeah, of course. Just to see Exploits. if I can work around it. Uh, Exploits in some have way. been fun. We are do enjoy those, uh, you know, whether it's totem poles or whatever have you. It's uh, I wouldn't really call it an exploit, but uh, it's an exploit. making yeah. use of the game mechanics. It's exploit. Right. <laughs> nah, cheesing it. Okay, exploiting. Nah. Uh, if, if if I if I use a mechanic, which advantage uh, puts me at a significant advantage, which is uh, due to simplistic animal calculations or behavior or game mechanics, then and I use it repeatedly, then yes, that's exploiting uh, a certain mechanic. Uh, therefore, uh, it's an exploit. But that's an just exploit is like the. Uh speedrun and use the unstuck to uh, get back to your yes. pod. That's an exploit. That's... that's not using the system, that's an exploit. Well, that, that's standing, on beams to, standing on beams to uh, kill animals, that's not an exploit. That's just cheesing. Standing on a beam off a cliff of the side of a thing, have animals running towards you and then yielding themselves to death, is not an exploit. No, no, it's not an exploit, it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but let's see here what the future yeah. holds for additional things, because there's another picture yeah. of some more brambles. I yeah, like this stone actually, as a marker and a little pathway, basically. I think it's more thing. like you can stand on top of the stone and shoot animals as they are getting mm. uh, slowed down by the brambles. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And I like the little, the little door pathway thing, which makes sense, right? Because animals will charge straight at you, so you are able to make a turn. So, yeah, it well. makes sense. Very good. Good design. Yeah. So, Leica, the Animal Companions update. Companion, not uh, mount, but companion. There's a difference. And this will become a bit more clear when we read through here. So, we have been quietly been working on the next, next big update for a couple of months now. We're excited to let you know the details, now that the networks and batteries are released. Leica is our animal companions update, which is well into development and entering the final stages now. Leica is an update focused on improving player experience with tamed creatures, including the all-important new ability to be able to pet your animals as seen in the picture below. Now this update will also include the ability to bring your tamed creatures to orbit and be called to a planet as needed. Interesting. The same as workshop gear. This will be possible now that we have established a reliable customs department. Okay. Soul might not be happy about it, but we'll we'll see. He might have to. <laughs> he might have something to say about it. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Bring tamed creatures to orbit and be called to the planet. So that means a Tuscar, which is currently Styx exclusive, you will be able to bring them to other planets. The same goes for the Terranus, which is Prometheus exclusive. Yeah. If you can call them up to the space station and call them down to the planet, it's a moon, but hey, come on, who, uh, who cares? Uh, yeah, then you should be able to like go to Olympus, tame a uh, Tuscar, somehow get it into a pod to send it back yeah. up. That's the question. What? How does the logistics component of that logic work? So yeah. And then you drop down on Prometheus, you bring down your trusty Tusker with you. It'll probably just be a big ass shuttle or something. I have no idea. 
probably with that that space dock thing that they mentioned as well will probably be there as well spaceport the thing where you do it yeah thing for the the thing. drop pods and for the cargo pods yeah yeah Two different i'm guessing ones. there'll just be a big ass drop pod for mount or something yeah maybe i don't know yeah it's going to be interesting to see how they <laughs> fix the logistics uh, indeed anyway we are also adding talent trees for each mount with the ability for mounts to gain experience, just as you do. I want speed talents for my MOA. More speed on your MOA, okay. Fine. Exactly. All right, you, you go for it, because I'm pretty happy with the speed I think can achieve already. I just it want you to be able to jump whilst running rather than having to just stand still and then just go, eh. Like yeah, well, just a little, a little thing, you, know, you can really jump whilst walking, not whilst running, indeed. Yeah, exactly. But that's the thing. So, uh, the the biggest problem or challenge a mower faces is a slight lip which goes over water. So, yeah. yeah. And maybe uh, a jump further talent, maybe. So, ooh, that would be useful. I think that would be my, or, or higher and further. Yeah, higher yeah. and further. Yeah, I'll take that any day. Uh, stamina, health, speed, nah, jump. Nah. The jump and the, the jump height and speed, yeah. Well, Especially by your base where I can jump over that small fence and then end off eating myself off the cliff again without even your com the, the computer like stuttering. So, Well, if, if I take my MOA to the uh, Lima 1 Exotics tree, if I'm using four pheromone modules and animal food, when, when I enter the uh, volcanic biome and I go down the first stairs, the first ramp, from there I can sprint all the way to the Lima 1 uh, exotic tree in one go. Mm. Thanks to the uh, increased uh, stamina of the uh, pheromone modules. And mm -hmm. the increased speed from the uh, animal food is also very nice. Or it's the other way around. The animal food other gives more stamina, um, and uh, pheromone modules give speed in some regions. That's correct. Yeah. But well, yeah. more stamina does mean you can travel faster because you don't have to uh, start walking to re st mm. uh, regen stamina no more. I know. So yeah. Now there will also be two new tamed creatures exclusively ordered from orbit. Hmm with their own gatherable resources. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is a... <laughs> now, with their own gatherable resources, that should tie to the two new tamed creatures. Yeah, so that means you either need to obtain resources in order to unlock them. Maybe, I don't know. Or to, f like you need or to, go, to feed them. You need them, to go or... find no, 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 you need to go find a sandworm egg and then go through caves and do a massive mission to go obtain it and then to, incubate it to in unlock. space. No, yeah, then to, then unlock to, to unlock it. Yeah, to unlock it so that you can get it, which is like a, it's like uh, most MMOs or games that you play, you have to spend a ridiculous amount of time finding or looking or searching for a rare drop or item in order to get the shiny amount. This is something towards that, I believe, yeah, which maybe. might be something nice, which makes sense because it's like a rare spawn or something. You have to go collect something and it's like a, you happen to stumble across it and therefore you can actually, that's, that's not too bad. I like that idea. Now, I do wonder as well, how expensive are they going to be to order from orbit? And how easily will they die? If you have to spend 5k uh, exotics and 10k ren to order a mount, you bring it to the planet and the first trip you make with the mount, it dies. Well, at least it's a way of getting rid of ren and uh, exotics. But yeah, we'll have to see. I don't know. Huh? It's, uh, it's, it's... Like I said, the whole logistics side is interesting, and as I'm seeing what they will be doing with it, would be something to see. Yeah. Hopefully, it would be like a, a mini boss rare spawn, which you get an item drop that you have to send back up 
and then you can like incubate it so it starts doing more interactions with the spaceship or with your starbase. Oh, it should be like new also. resources then, because everything in yeah. game currently uh, does not like an item must have the uh, meta mm. track in order to be able to be sent up to the space station. So yeah, but they said, yeah, it should be a new be... material, because yeah. otherwise you can't send it back up. Yeah, well. And there will be two new tame creatures with their own gatherable resources. So yeah. I'm assuming those gatherable resources are also in the terms of that sentence are also going to be new. So that makes sense. But also a new tier three and four water food trough and more. So yeah. yeah. So are we getting the food troughs with built-in refrigeration? So food doesn't spoil in the food troughs. Well, it says nice. tier three and four. Yeah. Those are some pretty darn fancy, like clicking. I well, mean, we already I determined I've... some of the water troughs. You can like hook up to the water network, so you don't have yeah, to manually fill them no more. Yeah, that's all. I mean, what else do you want? Chilled water? It's like damn. No, you get normal water. That's it. No, but for food, like yeah. if you chuck a whole bunch of different food items in. Dude, you you know how much put you. You just chuck in tomatoes because you just have a billion and one tomatoes growing up there. I know, so. tomatoes and honey because I have yeah. no idea what to do with the honey and the beeswax. But. Yeah, exactly. So having that refrigerated is going to be a waste of the resources you spend building that hype. No, too, unless it, they it, give just, it just means bonuses. I don't have to fill it up that often no more. Not true. But realistically, that's a minor thing considering, you know, whatever. But if it yeah, looks cool, bonuses, I'm assuming it's a, it's a bonuses. So, interesting so. thought. Uh, yeah. But how will that tie in with the animal food? Will mounts have uh, multiple food buffs then as well? Or maybe a talent unlock for multiple food buffs? Huh. This does open some interesting possibilities. Yeah, because then you would be con like more, you know, concerned about what you feed your animals rather than here is some acorns or here is some grass or here is some freaking spoiled food or whatever have you. So, yeah, maybe, I don't know. We'll have to probably see when they actually give us some more information, but I'm assuming there might be something mm -hmm. in the new, in the future, like hints, I'm not sure, we'll see. Well, next week we will have m even more details to share with you on what to expect for this uh, mm. Leica. So we have the Animal Companions update, and we will be having the uh, Animal Wellbeing DLC, or what was it called exactly? Uh, it was the Creature uh, Comforts. Creatures Comforts, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. we'll see yeah. you next week. It's going to be interesting. Also next week, water purification. Next week we will be adding a new survival dynamic to water, namely purification. Now water throughout the game will provide additional bonuses based on the cleanliness of the water, with devices throughout the different tiers providing different methods of purifying water. Interesting. So the whole water purification, well, we have heard about it a long time for a long time already. Like you get like the the tier one, which is uh, I don't know uh, a stick and some charcoal, yeah, yeah. which you can use to drink from streams and lakes, etc. Without uh, the risk of being poisoned. There's going to be tier two, three, uh, etc. Uh, water purifiers. The new thing here is provide additional bonuses based on the cleanliness. Mm. It's going to be uh, interesting. Yeah, I mean, technically at the moment, it's just like, yeah, you drink water, you might get the bug, you might not get the bug. So you get the bug, eh, I'll be recovered in 300 seconds, uh, then you carry on. It's not the end of the world, but definitely it's, it's just uh, just a bit of uh, higher water consumption and maybe exactly. a, a little bit of speed penalty but i don't even eh. think that like i said i don't even think it's that hence we don't care and therefore we never look no. at it again so the penalty system didn't work the, the penalty providing... isn't severe enough exactly but then basically even if it wasn't severe enough it's like yeah it's, it's a it's, it's a minor thing but the opposite spectrum is positive reinforcement which is yep. hey here's a little carrot and it's shiny 
uh, it might taste good. But here's a nicer, here's a nice, a very nice, and a very, very, very nice carrot because here's it's going to be a five percent uh, stamina uh, regen or a ten percent stamina regen for being uh, icy cold, water canteened, tea flavored, with berries in it. I don't know, something yeah. like that. It's like, ooh, how refreshing. So yeah, we'll see. Sparkly, bubbly, war. Yeah, yeah, sparkly Which, water, which yeah. makes you jump higher. I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or extra oomph in, in, in your jump, you know. Exactly. Yeah, it's gonna be, uh, gonna be interesting. Yeah, well, I mean the food stuff is already, you know, with the durations of buffs and stuff, are interesting. So, well, we'll see how it sort of plays into stuff because <laughs> water is a more basic format of the thing, but for us it's always just been, oh yeah, I have a canteen. It cools me down when I'm warm, and it cools me down when I'm cold. So stop doing that when it's cold. So we just worked around it. So we'll have to see how if this changes anything uh, majorly, or if it will just be a small carrot, basically. Yeah. So. Well, it probably means uh, I'm gonna put a tier four water purifier in the kitchen area. Now we talked about uh, put and uh, fill up my canteen from there. Oh, we talked about the the fact that the new um, Prometheus canteen is the heated one, so it's uh, like yeah, it's the is it the heated one or is it the cool? That's one? the heated one. The heated no, it's one. the heated one. That's the one where we said that was like pointless because we wouldn't yeah. want to use it. So it just depends because uh, yet again there is like the tea thing and the cocoa water stuff, but that's also stuff that we haven't really looked towards that often because it's you know, wasn't really yeah. worth it. So if yes, that's already the uh, case, then you know, what changes to the water system could they realistically want to make? Well, if the water move? will uh, give you more heat and cold resistance, if it's better purified. Yeah, like I said, it just depends. Uh, you know. And then the, obviously, you know, like, how long is that buff gonna last? Because yeah. with the four uh, module suit. I can't have yeah. my canteen in my suit no more, so me. It's not that bad, is it? But I mean, did you finally did you finally take a character down? Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Again, yeah, watch my streams, man. Yeah, dude, I dude, I don't, I, I don't have. Uh, it's. I know. Uh, you can watch know. them on YouTube as well, you know. Yeah, yeah I know, I know, I know. I actually, I, I did join your stream on. Exactly. What's it called again? Twitch. What's it called? What's the thing called? Uh. Is it? No, it's not Twitch, is it? What's it called? No, it on, is Twitch. On Twitch? Yeah, it's Twitch. Just, yeah, yeah. just my name, Gane van den Bosch. No, 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 but it's like, I, it's, I couldn't use, remember the app, or the, the site, or the thing, whatever Twitch is. Twitch.tv. Yeah, yeah, no, I, Slash. I, I did join. Yeah. You know, I was there, that's fine, I remember. Uh, so yeah, I've been running around with that shoot for a yeah. long time already now. Yeah, but let's move, are we going to move on to the new yeah. content quickly? Yeah, so if you like what we're doing with Icarus, you want to support continued development, do consider purchasing one or more of the DLCs for a few bucks. Would mean a lot. And yes, 140 euro might not be, you might not consider that a few bucks, uh, but don't forget it's like complete the set with like the entire everything. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. You can go for the smaller bundles like architecture bundle. Uh, or individual the outpost bundle or the individual items yeah yeah i mean a five dollar here or eight euro there it's you know just give it a shot and see if it's better yeah. than nothing so yeah exactly. i'll see myself whether or not there's something that interests me now realistically i don't play the game that much however yeah. if there is something nice which obviously you contribute towards it and like i said i did buy the expansion because of their very pro um, handling of the game mechanics. It might have just yeah. been to simplify their own um, sort of, you know, deployment rather than having, you know, hard, hard like locked gates, content gates, basically. But yeah, it's still yeah. A, a pro consumer decision in their point. I do indeed like important. their approach. Like, uh, you don't have to buy it in order to play it. You just have to connect to someone who does, uh, who has yeah. bought it. So you can at least uh, uh, check yeah. it out before having to buy it. 
Yeah. So, yeah. And like, for example, you don't play outpost, well, you don't have to buy the outpost. However, if, do you, want, if you want to support them, then you can buy the outpost to support them, even if you don't play them. It's all up to you. Yeah, true. But like I said, it's... It, they're small things, and the fact is that they do give you these uh, 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 cosmetic DLC things. So the fact that you can build some nice-looking furniture and things to sort of build your idyllic type of forest cabins or very cool, icy-looking, cool snow cave homes like your snow bear one or the polar bear. Yeah, the uh, cool. uh, brutalist, brut uh, brutalist room. Yeah. 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 But we're quickly going to check the new content yeah. uh, and the fixes stuff because so, obviously the new content is the the new brambles. Basically, so. b and brambles. Exactly. Areas. Yeah. Uh, what's this? Unlocking other farming seeds to allow brambles to be okay. That's just the that's the seeds thing. Yeah. Yeah. Fixes. Uh, uh, fixes. So fix crash when inventory container manager isn't able to be found. Yeah. Function. Some sort of yeah, it's a 404 error, so that makes sense. A function or a property, yeah. whatever. Uh, updated stairs, bricks, and the apex destructibles. Yeah, if you had like, uh, uh, I believe the clay brick stairs, if they got damaged, then the mesh was showing some kind of other stairs. It was looking very weird, so they fixed that one. Mm -hmm. Fix the number of typos in item texts. Allow the brutalist lamp to stack on one object, such as being placed on a table. The brutalist Don't you mention lamp? something like this? No, it was the industrial bookshelf. Oh, that's that one. Brutalist lamp, I'd have to check. I'm not sure. I might not have made this one, actually. If I have. Oh, now, I, I do a lot of with the uh, geode lamps from the... Uh, yeah, yeah. Those are the blue ones. From the cool. interior decoration DLC. Yeah, those look cool, yeah. Uh, oh, so apparently you weren't able to put it on top of a table a or cabinet. a uh, cabinet or whatever. I'm yeah. glad I fixed that. Uh, Sticks and Prometheus exploration missions now grant, uh, do grant their talent unlock on completion, like Olympus. This is mainly to prevent any issues if these blueprint trees are reorganized. So any I unlocks from the uh, exploration missions? I mean, there are like unlocks like the uh, cavern bow. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah. For Olympus, but and sticks. Yeah, sticks may be. Uh, no, it's not the talent unlock, not the blueprint unlock. Uh, there was the, those are the ones with the the shortcut unlocks. But don't it's think just, no, there no, was no, no. one. Just, no, no. In this case, it's just to prevent the maps from being reorganized. So it's purely just, yeah, there are some missions which grant you new uh, blu they, uh, blueprints. But yeah, the they grant the talent unlock, so the blueprint. Yeah. I'm not sure which blueprints are tied to exploration missions in Styx and Prometheus. Exploration missions specifically. Uh, I'm not sure, but I know Olympus, we know the ones, but it wasn't the sand, wasn't there like the... Yeah, the, for the sandworm uh, armor yeah. and weaponry, the uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, scorpion uh, armor Isn't and weaponry. Or was it Olympus? I thought it was Olympus all. Yeah, I think it could have been, but sticks, and I still, I played sticks yet. still, it wouldn't have been the uh, uh, exploration missions. Those are basically touch down, immediately get back up, and their ticked off is completed. And there were the 30 day missions, still 30 days no, from no, no, no. We had to when it was the, like the real time. But then we had, we, uh, you had to go get the worm stuff, wasn't it? There yeah, was, but that, was... that wasn't an exploration mission. I think it was an exploration it was, it was a you had to go do it. Uh, because it's, it, it's not the one that you had to just land down and go back up. You had to physically go complete the mission, remember? That There's, was like we had to go yeah. do that with our each of characters to get the thing unlocked. Yeah, just go down but, and go back up. But it, that was an exploration, I believe. I thought the explorations ones were the the like the oh, long ones without any back. quest objectives. So oh. you could go down and play thirty oh. days on the same mission. Oh, okay, I see what you mean. Um, yeah, those weren't explorations. Those were actual 
like normal missions. So for the for the weapons unlock and stuff, yeah. Unless there is something on the exploration mission that you could find that gives you something that you'd never knew about. Which actually might be pretty cool, actually, now that I think about it. Oh, here's an exploration mission. Go find stuff. Um, yeah, we never really did that. We just landed and never did anything there. Uh, so some of them we fact. landed, we built a big, big uh, ass base and uh, mined right. some purple I mean, exotics. For me, and... for me, it's like, I don't have to do it. Great. That means I just leave. But if there is something hidden that you have to go find to unlock something like, oh, you have to live there for yeah, but then 22 it... days and in-game days. And then that means you gain a cool armor set. That sounds something cool to me. Yeah, but then would, would it have, have been an uh, exploration or more? No, no, no it would, well, it would, but it would be like, yeah, exploring it, you'd probably have to maybe uh, be like, oh, you have to discover or read, verify, you know, the entire map or something. I don't know, something some, something that makes it exploration-based, but then you gain something for it, which unlocks a blueprint, which fixes this, fixes that fictional or, scenario. Or, do they mean extermination missions? Uh, yeah, could Six have, yeah. has a couple of extermination missions. Yeah. Uh, what the, the the scorpion stuff yeah. is a Styx one. Yeah. The black wolf uh, weaponry yeah. is a Styx. Yeah, I could have just been a typo from the mission and type. So yeah. Yeah. It, it's alright. And added fell safe to wind turbine self damage due to overcharge. Fail safes to stop so, the damage. To stop the damage so it doesn't, uh, so the uh, durability does not reduce to zero. Ah, oh, okay. I thought they already did that, so, okay, anyway. Uh, sorta, kinda, uh, but they also did say they are gonna, look at the next bullet points, increase the damage to wind turbines. As previously, they would cap to a very high health i.e. Mm -hmm. 50%, where storms would have negligible impacts. Yeah. So they added fail safe they can't be destroyed. They're still unable to be destroyed by storms, but they will eventually result in 0% base production. Yep, which is good. Uh, fixed clients only seeing the electrical network when opening a resource network inspector via the flow meter. Talked about that one. Resaved data table to resolve build issue, otherwise we wouldn't have had a new uh, update. Uh, fix certain expected devices, not showing the modifiers, etc. Talked about that already a bit. Half the damage uh, hedgehogs deal themselves. Talked about that one. Wind turbine damage taken is more consistent at different health levels. Uh, I have not checked them after every storm, but I reckon uh, the ones still in my base will have uh, well, technically a, a slightly a lower health and power output. Uh, if it, it makes sense that something that's effed up would be effed up quicker, if you know what I mean, especially if it's a storm. Uh, so the damage taken from weather is not a straight line, but it's going to be a curved line. Well, that's the thing that I was thinking, and that's what they've probably changed, because it's like... Because remember, a turbine is a very well-designed and balanced piece of equipment. If it gets off slightly, it's mm. gonna have some bad effects. Mm. And those bad effects are gonna get much, much worse the more it wobbles. And then it's just, no, it doesn't exist. So it is like, a, not a linear, but an exponential curve. So that would be more, but that's I think what they're trying to avoid now. I think it might have been that way, but yeah, it's I don't test so. Yeah, I think they're more going for a linear approach here. Yeah, exactly, but that's what it seems to be. Uh, to buy audio looping, audio yeah. looping correct, fixed. Uh, improved supply connection logic to provide smoother mm -hmm. connections. Talked about it. Update modifier effectiveness display mm. scaling around 100%. Talked about that one. Update yeah. spawn blocker check for fuel to reduce yeah, number of times. Update. Off thing, yeah. Talked about it. Updated many UI elements to prevent small backs with device. Talked about it. Yeah. 
Ja. Alcatraz ja, Mission, mission Fixed. Ja. En de Beast Mission Fixed. Oké. Okay. More adding Kiwi Idol to Death Order. Dude, if they actually bring out the Kiwi and it's being this massive thing that actually is like a mini boss, I swear it would be hilarious. It would be hilarious, but <laughs> <laughs> chances aren't well, that big, I'm afraid. Oh, come on, just if the devs are this thing, just just make it like a, a an April release on the April 1st kind of thing where the Kiwis are like as big as freaking elephants. Uh, April the 1st, uh, yeah. it is like two weeks, the second update from now, this will yeah. be on uh, March 29th. Oh, like I said. And they, they're not gonna use April 1st for a hotfix, don't think so. No, no, no. It's gonna be but too, it's, it's too just... much impact, but it would definitely be, uh, be fun to indeed just... get like 10, 12 feet tall kiwi. Yeah, just randomly walking bigger. along, it's like, what the heck is that thing? And then it's just this massive Kiwi, but anyway. Uh, Adding full base setup for the Ghost Croc. Yeah. We talked about last week, the Ghost Croc. The animal beds, yeah. In two projects, it should be the, uh, yeah. the new Creature Comfort one, probably. Yeah, yeah they're pushing those through. Animal Bed Royal Variation 2. Animal bed fur variation one, two, three, mm -hmm. and four. Yeah, indeed. Animal beds. Uh, hey, setting up tier four water trough so it filters yeah. the water. So the animals will get also a buff from the filtered water in the tier four uh, tier four troughs. Um, cool. Yeah, I mean, it depends on the buffs. You know, it might be more sanitary to drink out of. True. Sort of water. True, but. Shears, audio events for sheep stuff. Shishenko, uh, Shiko talked about it. Black Wolf armor. Would be nice to finally get it. Some some sketched armor, like the concept art, would be pretty cool to see. Yeah. Diamond shields? Nine of diamonds. Shield. Yeah, that's probably like a, a, a Ace of Spades kind of reference, I'm not sure. Uh, I don't know, let's see how playing card 9 of diamonds looks like. It's just a normal diamond card 9, nothing special. Um, it. Yeah, uh, basically you have the... Uh, Maybe it's referred to as a, like a, a, a what do you call it? Yeah, like you have like, like, like the... Fully uh, shield in the middle and uh, top and bottom. There is like the gap in the middle. Oh okay. Oh that one. Oh, okay. That's the nine of diamonds. Basically, through uh, two vertical rows of four and one in the middle. You know, okay. basically uh, letter H. Okay. Uh, let's see. Bestiary takes a chicken. <laughs> Future locks, best area entries for unreleased creatures. So no sneak preview through the <laughs> best good. area. Good, good, good. And blueprint info for the trail beacon tool, which is yeah. going to be used uh, in the mission to unlock the new uh, southern part of the Prometheus map. The swamp ape. Yep. Wayne behavior tree setup for movement and attacks. So it's gonna attack players. Okay. It's gonna fling brown things in your direction. <laughs> Maybe. Um uh, from Martinez armor we're gonna have two friends, black and white. Ooh. Uh, sets plural, so Yeah, that's pretty cool. I like Black armor and white armor, it's, it's not bad. White armor, uh, will it give a, 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 a stealth bonus in the snow? Uh, doubt it. Uh, it's just maybe cosmetics. White of blue highlights, black of gold or red highlights are usually the kind of uh, Probably, things yes. that people go for. And desert tracker saddle art. Well, I'm more looking at the prototype tree respawn. Yes, we are gonna have the cocoa palms uh, being plantable. Uh huh. 
Uh, here's a question. Will they grow in the Arctic? Plus it's gonna uh, take up a crop lot. Interesting how a tree is gonna be growing in like, what's it? Uh, three inches of dirt, but okay. Yeah, uh, but it's a thing because it was the cocoa tree, right? Uh, not the, yeah, the cocoa, cocoa nut tree. Cocoa nut palm. Yeah, tree thing, yeah. Yeah. Well, tree oh. respawn, that means respawning in the wild. Uh, well, like a thumper style thing. Yeah, back That's... in the day when they first uh, were talking about resource respawning, which eventually led to the thumper, they were also talking about a tree respawn device yeah well the problem that i you know always had with our base buildings was the fact that i always wanted to keep the trees close by so that it looked a bit more naturistic and planting trees for example in valheim so you know yeah. you wouldn't have this naked barren bland land around you but actually some forests and trees and greeneries so and i would trees. say the coconut palm trees you can like plant them in a crop lot so you should also be able to plant them in a mound with a d not with a t uh, yeah. and those mounds you can freely place on the map yeah that makes sense so, you sort of decorate your base of yeah. trees again that would be pretty cool I'm able to grow your own trees just normally like you would do would be pretty nice but and then you are have your base yeah. in a temperate zone and then all of a sudden yeah. there's this patch of palm trees with your base yeah, yeah. true build your own little oasis yeah that's but this prototype tree respawn if this is going to be a <coughs> thumper-esque device yep that is going to help you with uh getting trees back around your base true so, yeah. Which technically cool. would make it nice again because I think most well it depends because you know if the beginning prototype is going to be rebuilding trees where your base was built then you suddenly have trees shooting through your entire base the first time and then it's just like your whole base gets destroyed that would be pretty uh, unintentional <laughs> yeah so first time use this device do it a bit away from base to see what's actually gonna happen. Yeah, because that would be pretty bad if suddenly uh, there was just trees shooting through the entire base and the floors are collapsing and roof caves in and everything is just a pile of rubble. It's like, uh, you built the trees again. Yeah. Are you happy? Like, when, the, when the thumper uh, came out, uh, uh, yeah. I do know of uh, some streamer who was like, on stream, trying out the thumper for the first time. Right next, <clears throat> right next to his base. Oh, with the land sharks thing. Exactly. Yeah. No, well, nice. you had a nice base, past tense. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, test out this device a bit away from base. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a little good, but yeah, it's about it, I think. Uh, that's it's tracker saddle art assets for the mobile horse and buffalo. Yeah. Interesting. But yeah, here, tweaks ice sheets, new Prometheus Arctic area we don't have arctic yet on prometheus do we no sorry we do we don't have desert yeah. we don't have desert uh, we talked about the ice sheets last time as well i think it was mentioned yeah a couple yeah. of patches ago <laughs> fork density that's actually pretty cool because so that, uh, that's why you need the beacons because it's like so foggy you can't see no nothing yeah yeah which i uh, that dude it, that that's actually like one of the imagine coming face to face with a bear because of fog or something like that. <laughs> Polar bear, yikes! Yeah, you've you've done that. So uh, we have played Fallheim uh, 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 Misslands. Yeah, for example, something to that degree. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So yeah, yeah. It's gonna be. Uh, oh, no. I do hope for a, a desert area in Prometheus though, so we can get scorpions and sandworms in there as well. But, eh. Um, I, th I think it would make sense that they would sort of just rotate through different biomes. Um, and I think basically being able to gradually expand using, I mean, people, certain people don't like being, you know, trinkle fed, you know, content. But if you had a system where, you know, it'll be like, oh, you explore the map, you do your missions, 
and then a couple of weeks later they unlock a new zone and a map feature um, via the beacon system, whatever, then, you know, you could basically, you know, do like a Arctic and then desert and then forest and then swamp and then mm -hmm. volcanic and then they can just kind of come out with smaller um, updates or content expansions true, true. to keep people interested, I think, like they do with Valheim, for example, right? Because they yeah, have also, a new map zone or a new... Yeah, also, yeah. Uh, if they would have waited with enabling people to play until they had developed all the maps, that would have taken years more. For example, yeah. So. Without any income. So at some point you will have to start generating income, so you have to start selling your game. True. Sure. That's the point. So... Yeah. But yeah. Anyway, uh, yep. these were the patch notes. Uh, basically the new thing this week, Brambles. Which, uh, which I'm definitely going to test out. And, yeah. Basically that's, yes. that's it for, uh, for this patch notes. Yeah. Uh, so. Good luck with the... Wait, 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 what's this? Notify, notably T3 updated each trick of the jerry can. Oh, never mind. The, the, yeah, the creature okay. deterrent. Uh, yeah, 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 sorry. At the tier 3 jerry can. I was like, what was that? But yeah, that's about it. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, thanks for being be here. Up. Yeah, pleasure. I don't think I will be online for any of the game testing because it is almost midnight. So. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's a tad past midnight here, so I'm going to take a quick break and then I'm going to do uh, a bit of testing. I'm going to grab myself some... Uh, these. Sheets from the swamp, some ramble sheets, and I'm gonna uh, plant some of them, and we'll see. Yeah. Uh, we'll go from there. We'll see how far we well, get today. Well, well, thanks for having me, and uh, anytime. Otherwise, enjoy the gameplay, and I will do. catch you on the next patch notes. All right. Alrighty. Have a good one. Cheers. You too, man. So yeah, I'm gonna take. Uh, couple of minutes break uh, get a quick smoke and a new soda and then we'll uh, I'll be back for some uh, testing of the new brambles like I said quickly run to the uh, swamp grab me some brambles uh, plant them in the, in the base and let's see what we can do with the brambles in uh, the sense of making an uh, actually defensive layer around our base uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, these patch notes. We do it weekly. Uh, usually 21.30 GMT. A little, little bit later this week because I was late and my co-streamer couldn't make it. So uh, if you enjoyed it, a like would be appreciated. Other than that, uh, thanks for being here. And we'll see you folks around.